So as any of you will know from having been to a gig or even a faithless show, uh, there's a lot of power that's given off. That's myself on the right hand side of the, the left, the right, the left, is it the right or the left for you? It's the right hand side of the screen. That's me jumping up and down. Uh, I had a great flying career with the band Faithless for 15 years. And I was very humbled to play with such artists as the Spice Girls, Kylie Minogue and Dido for the duration of over 20 years. Um, so I'd like to share with you today how an event at a Faithless show, in fact, this Faithless show, which was at the Foray National in 2009 in Brussels, there was an event that was really quite spectacular. The crowd at this show stamped their feet so hard in time to the music that they caused an earthquake. An earthquake, can you believe it? They actually caused an earthquake. Just imagine the amount of power in that. I mean, just imagine, you're, I mean, if we're all here in this hall and everyone's stamped their feet, do you think we'd measure on the Richter scale? I'm not sure. There was a lot of power in that. And so it was imagining exactly that that inspired me to develop Spark. A little bit more about Spark. I'm supposed to have a Madonna mic, but it didn't quite fit, so I'm all, all hands. This is Spark. It's a percussion shaker that, as you play it, it converts the energy from using it into electricity so you can generate really effective lighting um, with some patent pending technology you can also charge up your phone and that's really important for somewhere like Kenya or any off-grid place where there isn't any electricity and it's a real issue for children walking home from school in the dark or needing to do their homework. How does it work? I know there's a science person here, does, can anybody guess how it works? Okay, I'm going to single you out. Let's, no? Okay, it's very, very basic. It's magnetic induction. So inside, there's a magnet with a coil. And as the magnet moves backwards and forwards, it charges up the coil that then creates a current and that store gets stored in a battery. So lo and behold, you get really effective light. So we began our product development through Kickstarter. And I don't know how many of you are aware of crowdfunding campaigns and Kickstarter. It was really helpful for us to develop our idea from prototype stage into the finished product. And I'm a big endorser of crowdfunding. And if there are any of you here who have great ideas, I know there's one at the back there, three at the back actually, um, I really can't endorse Kickstarter enough. And during our um, development phase, we were approached by some NGOs in Kenya. And they came up to me and they said, you know, you've got this idea for this prototype. We will literally fly you over to Kenya because there's such a need for this. Like communities really need it. There's been a big influx of Chinese cheap solar products that have got communities really disgruntled with solar energy come over and the biggest value is that people can engage with it you know it's through music it's celebratory and uh, that was really good for us it also meant that developing our product uh, we had to design something that was very rugged very robust and water resistant so during our beta testing we found that spark was useful for three things mobile phone charging light and education and I'm going to talk about the educational element in a little while. So for mobile phone charging, 75% of Kenyans live off the grid as I've said. More than 75% of people have a mobile phone. I mean it's a no-brainer. People really need to charge up their devices and Spark proves really useful to do that. And in Western Kenya, it can get dark at around four o'clock, and that means it's a real issue for children walking home from school in the dark on their own, and also for doing homework at night. So we caught up with a couple of children who uh, had finished school, and this is what they had to say. Every day I walk home from school in the dark. I like this shaker because it makes me feel safe. 
I really like my school. I like this shaker because when I go home, I read my books. So yeah, really powerful uh, use of spark there. On our initial school visits in Kenya, teachers would tell us that what they really struggled to find were practical solutions for theories that they were already teaching. So something like magnetic induction, which is on the natural, natural the national curriculum, um, they struggled to teach it because they had no tools in order to engage pupils. And somewhere like Africa, which is a thriving economy, um, governments and teachers really want to engage young people in entrepreneurship, in an innovator's mindset, and all of those things. And I'd really like to share a lovely story um, of when I went with a team to Kenya. We visited a small school in uh, Western Kenya, and there were about 50 or 60 pupils. There was a classroom of 12 people, and there was a lovely young boy called John. Now, I opened up Spark, and I showed the class the shaker, and John just froze. And he stared, and he stared, and he stared. And I went up to him. John was wearing a gray jumper, red and white check shirt, red shorts, gray socks. I said, John, if, I, if you could take this technology home, what would you do with it? And John said, with really big eyes, and he just looked up at me and he said, I would do anything. And it was that moment that we all knew the power that Spark could have if there was an educational element, that the biggest of impact of Spark would be through education. So imagine Spark as a, a really basic kit where young people could build it, learn about STEM subjects through the beautiful uh, arena of music. And along with that, they could learn about entrepreneurship, sustainability, craft, art. Um, it's really quite powerful. And so, that's what we've done, and that's why we're here. As you can see, the Spark educational kit doesn't really look very much like Spark. And for those of you who joined us a little bit later, this is the original. And what we've done is we've stripped back all the high-tech elements and really gone for grassroots uh, making, you know, we're trying to encourage young people to make and really to show them that the innovation that we came up with is actually quite simple. You know, what we've done is bring music and technology together and clean technology and that actually innovation is really simple. So what we want to promote is that small ideas can lead to big change. We wanted to develop the kit uh, with the end user and not only for the end user. So we teamed up with some students from UCL Academy here in London and Geraldine Davis, the headmistress, was really supportive of us. Uh, she's all about cross-curricular activity. And what we did, first of all, was we put out a number of different ideas. So we tested if, they, if the students wanted to get engaged with IoT sensors, whether it was a craft element, and we also wanted to uh, highlight that 99% of the world does have real world problems and that again, small ideas can lead to big change. So some interesting facts about the Spark Kit. It's great for 10 years and upwards, so key stages two and four in this country. It's reusable. Lessons can last between one hour to 13 weeks, and so we're building our web resources uh, currently, so we have some information on there at the moment. Um, so there's really some quite uh, good things that pupils can get stuck into. And it's fun. You know, we're making STEM fun through STEAM. It's cross-curricular, and it's a great learning tool. Learning outcomes include learning about electronics, magnetic induction, and the principles of electricity. Understanding how to build a circuit and to learn about electronic components. Developing fine motor skills. So what we've done with the actual case is we've created uh, an origami type case, a little bit like Lego. 
And through that, they can assemble the kit and start thinking three-dimensionally. And also understanding the importance of sustainability and learning to become positive innovators and members of society. Right, just to add a little bit more meat into the equation, uh, we have developed a comic, and uh, I can see a lot of you smiling here. The artist is actually sitting on the back row. Sorry to point you out there, but uh, I think it's important. Give him a round of applause. Wonderful, great. What we wanted to do with Gaia, the Earth Tech Warrior, who is the main character, is have her as a, a STEM superhero. You know, I think we need more women STEM warriors and uh, Shake Your Power is comprised of 99% women, so we're all about pushing that agenda. And in this comic that comes alongside the kit, you have the instructions at the back and this wonderful story. And look at that artwork, it's just beautiful. Um, we see Gaia with her pet Coda and Coda spawns a high-tech vest, it's a solar vest, and he's got high-tech gadgets. We have Lucas on the right there, Gaia's lovely friend. And in this particular issue, Gaia goes around trying to solve the problem of some water volcanoes that have become blocked, and she uses Spark to unblock those volcanoes. So yeah, that's really quite lovely. If there are any publishers sitting here and standing at the back, please do get in touch with us afterwards. We're really keen to get this out as a, as a publication. Linking to the arts then, it's precisely because my background is from music that there's been a really natural step between linking the discipline. So in this case, it's music with science and clean technology. And for anyone who's into music or who's learned any music at school, you'll know that there's a natural correlation between music and maths, for example. For us at Shake Your Power then, we're really about using the arts as a methodology for innovation, for opening the mind, for creative thinking, for really getting outside of the box and getting away from this kind of strict, uh, narrow-minded, just sole focus on one discipline. We believe that the future of education is about cross-pollinating disciplines, about collaboration, about instilling a really creative mindset in young people so that they can become the next agile thinkers of the future, you know, the great scientists um, to come. The challenges that young people will face are all about this nurturing of an agile mind and hopefully it will encourage them to become creators of simple products with high value, providing valuable needs. And that's exactly what we've done with the Spark Kit. We've taken that essence from uh, the, the beginning of the story, from music, from knowing that the power of music can do social good, and that's what we have right here. So if any of you want to come and chat more about the kit, we're also selling them at our stand, so F92. Please do come after this talk. We're here for another couple of hours, so it'd be great to see you down there. Lastly, I would just like to talk about three challenges that we've had along the way as a startup and how we've overcome them. Uh, the first one is that it took roughly two years to develop our first product. So from user testing, coming back, changing it, trying to change it again and getting it right, market tested, all of those things two years and what we've ended up with is a more expensive product than we'd have liked. So the magnetic induction is actually the most expensive part of the product. And so that has affected our business model. The business model was originally around going directly to the user in off-grid areas and um, really trying to get on the ground distributors, but we've been unable to do that. We've had to shift our business model to go to large corporates for CSR. So for any of you wanting to get an idea off the ground, please do bear that in mind. You know, the cost is really quite something to consider right at the beginning. We're now manufacturing in Shenzhen, in China. Shenzhen is uh, the hub of entrepreneurialism. It's great for anyone wanting to get involved in an incubator and looking to manufacture within China particularly. Um, again, like I say, the magnet and the coil is the most expensive thing. So what we've done with the educational kit is we've brought it right back home. We're a completely British product and uh, we're a British company and it's really great to be standing here in the 
DIT lounge saying that. So it also means that we have a lot more control. So China is fantastic to, for, for many reasons, but we have to keep going back there. It's expensive and uh, it's really much better for us to be right at home. And finally, for those of you who want to create things and get out there and fulfill your dreams, networking. You know, networking, building relationships has been so crucial for us. We've got a lot of people that have aligned to our mission, who've come on board, they're experts, they've given pro bono advice. So I can't stress the um, importance of that. I think that's all we have time for today. So thanks so much for listening. <laughs>